You're back for more punishment, I guess. I mean, it was always going to be a tough game, wasn't it, this, this game against Germany? Yeah. But you wouldn't have expected... You could, no disgrace in losing to Germany, but it's kind of how you lose it, and that wasn't great last night. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, listening to, to the boys and Steve Clark speak there as well, it just wasn't Scotland. It wasn't Scotland-like. It wasn't, um, you know, what had you know got us to, you know, another um, Euros. Um, you know, that you look at the way that Scotland went about the business in the group stages of the qualifying uh, campaign, that, you know, they were aggressive in the press, um, got after teams, stopped them playing, and it just didn't happen last night. I mean, I sat here and <laughs> I said, you've got to give the Germans credit. You know, they were, they were unbelievable in, in spells. But I think, you know, Scotland uh, contributed to that, there's no doubt. What do you think went wrong? Was it from the selection? Uh, my, <laughs> well, fli my, my, my flight's at <laughs> half 11, I think, or something. So, well, um, OK, let's start with the selection then, because when I saw that Billy Gilmore wasn't in the team, yep. I thought, well, there's someone who gets on the ball you're basically saying we're expecting to not have any of the ball at all. No, I, mean, I think you can't go and sit in um, and just defend for 90 minutes. And I, and I can understand why Steve Clark, um, I mean, if you, if you, right at the start, Ralston was high, Ro, uh, Robertson was high, and I kind of felt as if you know McTominay was asked to maybe go and um, once uh, Tony Ralston got higher, um, Scott McTominay would drop in and maybe protect that area. Um, I mean, there's no doubt Billy Gilmer in terms of getting on the ball and keeping it um, is, is far better than probably anybody in the Scotland squad. Um, and it's easy after the game to say, you know, we, sh we should have done this and should have done that. But, you know, when you look at... I mean, McTominay hadn't really played a lot of football coming into it. Um, I just felt as if maybe that balance of McGregor and, and uh, Gilmer would have been a lot better to keep the ball. I mean, it started right from I mean, the, the opening minutes. I think it was Cal McGregor, actually, who's very unlikely comes in and he just hooks it away. And you're like, at this level, you're going to have to get your foot on the ball and keep it from put a few passes together. Um, the gaps, you know, I think, between defence and midfield was huge. I mean, Germany, their movement from the front four as such, um, you know, were able to get on the ball, get on the turn there and thread little balls through. They were, they were um, you know, they were, they were very good. But I think from a Scotland point of view, you know, and we've came so far in terms of, you know, yes, and I spoke there about the press and aggressive and getting after teams, but we've got good players on the ball as well, but we just didn't show any of it last night. Just wondering about the psychology of qualifying for a tournament. You know, if, for England, it's all about trying to win a tournament and getting over the line. For Scotland, it's, it's the last couple of uh, Euros, it's been about yep. qualifying. So, and they did that brilliantly. I mean, yeah. the campaign was, was terrific, but since then, their performances have fallen away. You know, defeats to the Netherlands, France, Ireland, Northern Ireland. It, it hasn't been brilliant in that regard. Is it when they qualify psychologically it's a little bit, oh, we're there now, rather than thinking actually we're going to go and do well in this comp? Well, I think it's, I mean, it's a good point to, to make. It, you kind of get the feeling that, you know, everybody was buzzing and rightly so, you know, it'd been it's back to back Euros but you felt as if the last one because of the Covid and, um, you know, it wasn't really what we'd expected. Um, but it's been a long time since Scotland had qualified, 98 um, before that. Um, so, listen, I, I can understand um, you know, the adulation and everybody buzzing and, and everything that comes along with qualifying. But when you get there, you've got to perform better. Um, you know, as I said, I've obviously been part of generations that have failed. Um, that's the reality of it. This group has got us to back-to-back -back, um, Euros and deserve enormous credit. But they'll be disappointed. And, you know, a, a tad embarrassed with the performance last night because once you get there, you don't want to just make up the numbers and you kind of get the feeling that that's what we're doing. But... Listen, there's been better Scotland teams than this have went to Euros, went to World Cups and just made up the numbers. So, look, it's, it's, um, last night was bad, but you've still got an opportunity to come out of the group. And I think that's the message that the players, Steve Clark will uh, relay to the players. You've got to, the fans will stay with you. That is, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. But you've got to have the confidence that you can still come out of this group. And you've got, you know, you've got two tough games coming up. But, um, you know, I'm sure Switzerland and Hungary will be saying the exact same thing. That wasn't Scotland. There's going to be a reaction for them in the next two games. So they're the positives, the two games left to come. I just want to pick your um, brains on Ryan Porteous. The red card, it was a bad red card yeah, yeah. at a terrible time. How will he be feeling this morning, feeling like he's let a whole nation down? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, listen, we've seen it before um, and, you, and you don't want to see it. everybody you know, pin the, the blame on. He'll know himself. Um, you know, you've got to remember he's a human being and, and the reaction afterwards, you know, will be tough to, to deal with. Um, but there's no point in going in on him and, and you know, crucifying him and you know, everybody's um, you know, having a go at him. He's made a mistake. He'll know he's made a mistake. Um, it's a terrible tackle. Elkai Gundogan's lucky that he's not, um, you know, come away with a broken leg. Um, and I didn't think he needed to make it because, you know, he's there. Just stick your leg out, block it. But, you know, instincts and, and maybe you get carried away a little bit and, you know, you jump two-footed. But I'm sure Ryan Portis will, you know, he will. He'll be absolutely gutted there this morning. But, um, listen, 
you need to imagine that'll be his year is over. You've probably got a two game ban for that as well. And um, it's sad, but um, you know, you've got to you've, you've got to defend a lot better. Um, but listen, it shuts the door for Ryan Portis, but it opens the door for somebody else and it's gonna be better. It has yeah. to be better.